Hey everybody, Ray Flynn with ThirdFloorWars.com and we've got an unboxing video for Cult of the Burning Man from Weird's new game, The Other Side. I kickstarted this back a couple of years ago when it was picking up steam and it's been a long wait but we finally got it in our hot, greedy little hands. And I'm going to give you my first impressions on everything from the packaging to the look of the models. Don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button to stay up to date with all video content that we'll be releasing for ThirdFloorWars.com up to and including video streaming, the new From Box to Tabletop series featuring Craig Shipman painting miniatures literally from the box to the tabletop. He goes through everything. It's a great video series. He's just updated his equipment and he's got some great visuals that go alongside of him actually painting the model. So make sure to check that out. Pros and beginners alike are going to get some good content out of this. First off, the packaging for this was actually very well done. I know it's kind of the flip of the cards as to how the shippers handle it, but mine seemed to do quite well. Nothing was crushed in, and everything was nice and in his boxes. A few loose packs of things were carefully on top, but there was plenty of bubble wrap. I went in on the dual commander pledge, optioning for Cult of the Burning Man, which I will be maining. Second, I went for Gibbering Hordes, mostly because of their shared dual commander. I decided I was going to go all in on the cult, picking up at least one of every add-on they had. Now let's take a look at the core rulebook. This is a work of art. The production quality is some of the best I've seen out of Weird. The artwork and layouts are very well done. The materials are extremely high quality. At the front is a brief intro, timeline, and the game rules, which encompasses a scant 20 to 30 pages of the entire book. This is how much of the book has been relegated to cards and fluff. And let me tell you, there's not that many cards. Up next, we have the Kickstarter exclusive commander deck, starting with the Crow Suit, Absinia. First thing I will say is that once again, it is stunning. Second thing I will say is that your opponent is going to hate reading those cards. The font is quite small, and the artwork is the dominant piece on every single one. It's absolutely gorgeous, but probably not functional beyond casual games. Hordes holds the mask suit, and my favorite model, Horomatangi, on the 11. King's Empire shows up for Rams, with the card of note being the Motor Scout. There's just something priceless about a guy on a reverse tricycle with a machine gun instead of the basket. Last but most certainly not least is the Cult of the Burning Man in Tomes. Gorish shows up on the 11th slot, which is interesting because the dual commanders appear to only be on their home allegiance. Looking back at Absinia, we see that they got their dual commander on 12, which I wonder if that was a mistake or not. Last we have Bin Nguyen and Samantha Thrace on the black and red joker respectively. I kind of really like the fact that they put the Malifaux on the black joker and Guild on the red joker. It just seems poetic. The last thing to go over before we get to models are the tokens. They're quite substantial, made out of acrylic, with a very nice label that's stuck to one side. Included are five shaken tokens, five reinforcement tokens, five inspired tokens, and five tactics tokens. Ah yes, and can't forget about the pinned tokens, also five. My only complaint is not really the right word, but point of interest maybe, is that because the sticker is only stuck to one side of the tokens, they may be double-sided but there does seem to be a side that's more correct than the other side due to the illusion of depth that is gained. First two models we're going to look at are the two champions that we were able to buy as add-ons. They both come with 40 millimeter recessed bases, something that I'm looking forward to taking advantage of when it comes to actually basing. Bin Nguyen from the Court of Two is a beautiful model. The details on it are absolutely fantastic. There's very little in the way of mold lines, and it's not too many gaps from what I can see.
The same is true from the guild, Samantha Thrace, looking quite imposing with her giant axe, gun perhaps, slung over her shoulders. Again, not too much in the way of mold lines or gaps to be filled on this model. Another very nice part of the Kickstarter were these embossed alternate cards, I guess you could call them. They are kind of what we would normally consider to be the foil cards from Malifaux, but they didn't have alternate artwork, it was just the embossing. Nonetheless, they're very cool and a nice addition to the Kickstarter. Finally, we come to the Allegiance box. Cult of the Burning Man, here we go. I have to say, I'm very impressed by the overall package design for the other side. The Allegiance box itself comes with three squads and one of the crew commanders, in this case Adidatos. We get two squads of the Warped, one squad of Stalking Portals. In addition to that, you get a bunch of tokens, tape measure, cards, and a playing deck. It's really designed to be an entire encounter in a box, and that's something that I really love that Weird is doing here. First stop, we have the tape measure. It's flimsy, at least the actual measure part of it. Nothing too unexpected here, they can't really put in an expensive thing. It's a locking measure, which is really, really nice. Feels good in the hand. Kind of a uh, neat little bonus to have. Honestly, I really like it. Of course, we have the Fate deck. Oh, and by the way, little sigil for the other side. Love that. And now we get to the tokens. First package we have are the objective markers. They appear to be 50 millimeter. Very nice, thick cardboard. Die cut on them is very, very nice. No complaints here. Next up, we have portal markers. These are actually a major mechanic of cult. You place three of them during the deployment phase, and you're able to warp between them. Adidatius gives you a fourth one. Tension to detail is very nice. They look really cool. Of course, we have the pack of stack cards. Now to the tokens. Unlike the acrylics, tactics are the only type that are unitaskers. The other four are split among two tokens. This honestly makes a lot of sense because Pin cancel out Reinforcement and Shaking cancel Inspired. Next we have the bases. Now this is the thing about the other side that is really probably the most innovative and it's my favorite feature or one of. Each of the major bases are called plug bases and their whole design is that you are putting the smaller bases into the plug bases. They kind of act like a hit point counter visually on the table. Each fire team has a number of hit points equal to the number of models that plug base can hold. So in the case of the one I'm holding currently, it has three hit points. The rest of the video is going to be more of a showcase of the actual model, so I'm only going to make commentary when it's warranted.
As you can see on this model, there's a lot of gaps that are going to need to be green stuffed. This appears to be very hit or miss, and several of the models throughout the rest of the video have varying degrees of gapping and flash that are going to need to be cleaned off. From what I've seen across the Facebook posts and various other sites, this seems to be pretty random. Some people have gotten extremely lucky, others not so much. But regardless, from what I've seen personally, it's nothing too terrible and nothing that can't be overcome. And considering you don't have to assemble the model, it's a small price to pay for the quality we're getting. While there were three adjuncts in this particular box, I believe normally it only comes with one. We got several adjuncts for Kickstarter stretch goals. One of the cool things about the Breachlings is that they also came with four tokens because they can be summoned by one of the squads. Kinda wish I had known that because I ordered an extra one, but never hurts to have more Breachlings.
Thank you everybody for watching. This has been Ray Flynn with Third Floor Wars, and I'll see you on the other side.